Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. My name is Kelly, and welcome back to part two of our Good Omens series. So excited to dive in. If you haven't seen part one, you wanna make sure you go and watch that first, otherwise this isn't gonna make very much sense. And without further ado, let's just dive right in. So if you will remember, we left off with our friends Crowley and Aziraphale being shot. Yeah, and they are at the Tadfield Manor Conference and Management Training Center, which used to be the hospital where the Antichrist and the other baby were born. And Crowley and Aziraphale are attempting to find hospital records or find out like how possibly the Antichrist could have been mixed up with another baby. So they've been shot but then they get up and they realise they have been shot with pinballs. Yeah it's just pain it's okay guys it's fine. And it was a man named Tompkins who hit them. So like I said this is a management training company and basically as part of their management training they're doing paintballing so they've got paintball guns and they're like shooting each other with them. And this guy Tompkins sees Crowley and Aziraphale and he goes to fire again he's like get you this time. And Crowley basically does like a, a gesture and makes the man pass out. So like I said, they can perform like little, little miracles, little moments of like magical stuff. So the man passes out. Crowley walks over and he picks up the paintball gun and he kind of like strokes it in his hand and he's like, hmm, interesting paintball gun and then puts it down. Now as they head inside, they hear real gunshots and Aziraphale's like oh my god is that real gunshots like what's going on basically Crowley cheeky little devil turned the guns that they have into real guns so the management training company outside are actually shooting themselves with real bullets and Aziraphale's like oh my god like people are gonna die what are you doing and Crowley's like oh come on no one will actually get hurt and obviously all the people with guns who get shot end up like getting up afterwards and it's all a miracle. So they find Mary Hodges, who if you remember used to be Sister Mary Loquacious, who was there when the Antichrist was switched, who did the switching. And they question her about what happened and she said that she doesn't know, you know, it's possible they could have been switched incorrectly. And they don't really get to ask her much else because everyone's freaking out downstairs about the fact that like, everyone's being shot for real. And so they leave and they drive off and they decide, okay, we still don't really know what happened. Let's pull in our team of agents each to try and figure out what could have happened. So basically both of them have like a team of people who they trust within the UK who will like be able to find stuff out for them. They're like, okay, we'll talk to them. We'll try and find out some more. So as Crowley drives up to Aziraphale's bookshop to drop him off, Aziraphale notices on the floor of the car, he's like, oh, there's a book. So he picks up the book and he's like, whoa, like, I find the book. And then he goes into his bookshop. He's like, I gotta go. And he runs into the bookshop. And Aziraphale proceeds to spend hours and hours just flicking through this book and just kind of trying to like figure out it all and write notes and you know, you know, you know, the plan. Now, do you remember our four horsemen of the apocalypse? We have war and famine are the two that we have met so far. So we're back with war again and she's at a hotel bar she's on her holidays she's like enjoying a little drinky drink and a fight breaks out between a couple of different like factions like gangs whatever there's a standoff and they're all like pointing at each other's guns like uh, uh, uh. and a man suddenly squeezes through them it's like excuse me excuse me sorry i'm not involved in this i just want to get through and he is a parcel delivery man and i think his name is leslie but they know i don't think they ever say it. i can't remember if they ever say in the book Anyway, the parcel delivery man comes in, he walks up to War and he's like, here's a parcel for you. And he presents her with a parcel. Now she opens the parcel and pulls out a huge sword, like a huge sword. And obviously the gangs are then like, hold on, <laughs> hold on. She's got a weapon and they start to point everything towards her and they're like, hold on, what's going on here? And they encircle her. And then just like that, all of the glass in the room just shatters and there's just like bodies all around her now. Okay, now it's Thursday and we are with the them. So the them is the name of the gang of Adam and his friends. So Adam, if you remember, he is our real antichrist and his group of friends and him are called the them. So we've got Adam, we've got his dog, who if you remember, came to him in part one and he's a hellhound sent by hell. Then we've got his friends, we've got Wensley Dale. I know, I love that name. We've got Pepper and we've got Brian and that is the them. And they're just hanging out and they're talking about a newcomer who has just arrived in the village. And the person they're talking about is Anathema. 
So if you remember from the first part, Anathema is a descendant of Agnes who created the book. And Anathema is a witch just like her ancestor was, Agnes. And the them were talking about witches and they're like, oh, she's probably a witch. Like, what if she's a witch? Like, what are we gonna do? And they decide they're gonna start an inquisition against witches to protect their neighborhood. It's basically like a kid's game in a sense where they're like, oh, we're gonna protect the neighborhood. And they like pretend to interrogate someone. Now later in the day, Day, Adam is walking past Jasmine Cottage which is where Anathema lives and he hears some really loud crying and he's like what is that and he sees Anathema and he's like she doesn't look like a witch like she just looks like a normal person so it's probably safe so he goes over and he talks to her so she ends up telling him that she's lost something and it's a really important book which if you remember a zero film now has and Adam's very straight up he's like um listen I need to ask you like are you a witch and she's like no I'm an occultist and he's like oh okay that's fine then not knowing what an occultist actually is so she invites him into the cottage for like a cup of tea and to chat more and Adam goes in but his dog won't go in after him until Adam's like can't come with me so obviously the dog picks up on the fact that she's a witch Adam has no idea he's like just come inside and then the dog does what his master commands so Anathema and Adam continue to chat in the cottage Anathema tells him about all of this stuff that like is being covered up in the world like conspiracy theories she tells him about like UFOs and aliens Tibetans who are like watching us through tunnels, like the lost city of Atlantis, all of this stuff. And she gives him a bunch of magazines to read with all this stuff about all of these things in it. And Adam then goes home and like starts reading it all. And then in the middle of the night, that night, alarms are going off in a nuclear power station. Everyone's freaking out. Everyone's like, what's going on? Why are the alarms going off? And they go to check the nuclear reactor. So the guy unlocks, the worker unlocks where the nuclear reactor should be. And it's gone. Yeah, it's it's 500 tons of uranium and it's just gone. And exactly as he does that, Adam rolls over in his sleep. So basically what's happening here is that Adam, everything he starts believing is coming true. And we'll see more of this as we go along. But so he now believes like there's something really wrong with nuclear reactors. So the nuclear reactor is suddenly gone. <laughs> it's Friday and we're back with Dr. Raven Sable which if you remember from the first part we saw him in like a New York restaurant. He was happy that people weren't eating because his real name is Famine and he's one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. And we find out about a few companies that he started. So he's got Choi which is food that has the nutritional content of a Sony Walkman. <laughs> then we've got snacks which are junk food made from real junk. And then we've got meals, which if you eat enough, you will get fat, but you will also die of malnutrition. <laughs> so yeah, not good. And Raven goes to a restaurant that sells his food, like a fast food restaurant, and he orders a full meal. He stares at it for a bit, he admires it. He's like, I just do excellent work. Then he walks over and he throws it straight in the bin because he knows it's terrible. And just then, a delivery man arrives. So the same parcel man as before arrives with a parcel for Famine and he gives it to him and he opens it and it's a set of brass scales. And Famine is like, it's time. Finally, it's time. And he asks his assistant to like cancel all of his appointments. He's going to the UK. Now we see Adam again and he's telling all of his friends about all the stuff he's learning from Anathema, the UFOs, the aliens, Atlantis, blah, 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 telling them about all of it. And he gets stuck into reading more of his magazines. He asks for more magazines, like he's super into it. Meanwhile, Anathema is poring over maps that she has. So she's basically been tracking ley lines, like invisible lines that are beginning to shift positions. And when she joins up the dots of where the lines are going, it's a spiral that culminates in Tadfield. Now, at the same time, several thousand miles away, Captain Vincent and his crew are sailing in the sea when suddenly they come to land. Like they just, the, the boat just starts moving on to land that has come out of nowhere. And surprise, surprise, it's the lost city of Atlantis. <laughs> and they start talking to men wearing like a big white robe. So yeah, another thing that Adam believes, common truth. Okay, let's revisit our friend Newton Pulsifier because we haven't talked about him in a bit. And now he's all grown up. And this is a side note, but in the TV version, he is played by Jack Whitehall, who is a UK comedian. I 
love this casting. I mean, I love the casting of pretty much the whole show. I think it's really well cast, but in particular, I just think this role is so good for him and he plays it so, so well. So yeah, I just wanted to say it. So we find out that Newton is a descendant of Witchfinders. Now he's been like fired from his job, he's not in a good place and he sees an ad in a newspaper and it says, join the professionals. Part-time assistant required to combat the forces of darkness. Uniform basic training provided, field promotion certain, be it mad. So he phones the number on the ad and he ends up speaking to Madame Tracy, this lady right here. And Madame Tracy is Shadwell's next door neighbor. Now Shadwell is the president of the Witchfinders Association. So he's the one that's put this advert in the newspaper. Shadwell. So Shadwell and Madame Tracy are next door neighbors. So Newton talks to Madame Tracy, who's like, oh yeah, I'll put you on with Shadwell. Puts him on with Shadwell and they agree to meet. Shadwell asks him some very important questions, such as what is his name, if he's fit, how many nipples he has, and if he has his own pair of scissors. All the important questions. Aziraphale now has a stack of notes beside him, which he has been making from looking through the book. He phones up direct inquiries and he's asking for the youngs in Tadfield, and a middle-aged voice answers saying Tadfield 666, and Aziraphale hangs up. Now, Newton Falsifier has come to see Shadwell, and Shadwell hands him a list which says, number one, which is number two, unexplained phenomena. And they're basically going through newspapers and the scissors that he made him bring are for them to cut out anything that looks like it could be witches or unexplained phenomena. And Newt basically starts talking about a village called Tadfield, which has been having very seasonal weather for the last 11 years. So basically in winter, they have perfect snowy winters, Christmas Eve snowing, perfect. In summer they have beautiful hot weather, in autumn it's crispy but it's sunny. Perfect seasons all year round, which if you live in the UK <laughs> you know that that is not what happens ever. <laughs> Newt's like this is really weird and he says to Shadwell like I think I'll go out and investigate tomorrow and Shadwell's like okay. And whilst Newt is there Shadwell gets a call and it's from Aziraphale. So Shadwell being the president of the Witchfinders Association is one of like his trusted agencies. So he gets a call from Aziraphale and then Newt leaves and he gets a second call and it's from Crowley. So the Witchfinders Association is trusted by both of them basically. Saturday. So it's very early on Saturday morning and it's the last day of the world. Yeah, the last day of the world. The same delivery man, who we've seen a few times before, he walks up to a river and the river is basically overrun with a ton of rubbish. It looks disgusting and gross. And he walks up to this river and he starts talking to a man and he gives him a parcel. Now, as he's talking to this person, um, he opens the parcel and the parcel is basically a crown. Now, this person touches the crown and the crown turns black. This is the third of our four horsemen of the apocalypse and it's Lucian. The delivery man then goes back to his van. So he writes a little note to his wife that says, I love you, which is so cute. And then he leaves his delivery van and goes to cross the road and he almost gets hit, but hits by a truck. So he goes to walk across the road and the, the truck is like, Shoo, and just misses him. And he's like, thank God, like I could have just died. And suddenly a shadowy figure shows up beside him in a big black cloak with like, you can't even see his face or his eyes. Now this is the fourth horseman of the apocalypse, death. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Death himself. Now this is a side note, but if you've ever read any of Terry Pratchett's Discworld novels, you will know Death already. He comes up in all of Terry Pratchett's Discworld books and he is just like, he's always a funny character in those. Like he's just so well written by Terry Pratchett. But Death comes to the delivery man. So essentially the delivery man's like, oh, I haven't been hit, great. Actually, he was hit by that truck. So he's about to die. And Death says to him, don't think of it as dying. Think of it as avoiding the rush, because <laughs> obviously the world's gonna end today anyways. Okay, so next we flash back and we hear about Agnes Nutter's death. Now, if you remember, Agnes is the one who wrote the book, also the ancestor of Anathema. And we find out about how she died. So Agnes Nutter, obviously being a witch, was hunted down by the Witchfinders Association and was killed at the stake, so like burned at the stake. And she was burned at the stake by none other than the ancestor of Newton Pulsifier, because of course he's a witchfinder, he's a descendant of witchfinders, and he's a descendant of a guy called Thou, thou Shalt Not Admit, a Thou shalt not commit adultery, Pulsifier is his like ancestor. So he killed Agnes Nutter. But as she's being burned at the stake, Agnes is like, you guys will regret this. Like you shouldn't do this. Anyone who does this is bad, blah, blah, blah. She says like a whole little speech. And as she's burning about 30 seconds after, there's a, an explosion. And basically Agnes 
the cheeky little so-and-so was carrying 50 pounds of gunpowder and 40 pounds of roofing nails with her on her person. So whenever she went up, so did the whole village green, killing all of those like witch finders and people who set out to kill her. She's kind of a badass, I'm not gonna lie. So speaking of the witch finders descendant, we go back to see our friend Newton. Actually, do you know what? We should move, we shall move Agnes to the graveyard. I mean, she's been dead all this time, but I feel like we just, we should anyways. And we also need to move our parcel delivery man to the graveyard. Okay, so like I said, we're back with Newton Balsifier and he he is on his way to Tadfield because he's obviously going to investigate like the weather's always really good, like what's going on, maybe there's witches, so he's going to investigate. Driving down the road and a UFO lands beside his car. Can you imagine? <laughs> a UFO lands beside his car and aliens come out of it and he just stops his car and he's like, what? is going on. Now aliens come out of it and they come over and talk to him and they're like we bring you a message of great peace and that's it. That's all they say and then they leave and go. So again it's one of Adam's things that he believes is that aliens are real but they're peaceful. So these aliens come, they say we come in peace and then they leave again. So it's one of his beliefs coming true again. Then Newt continues down the road and he's got bad luck honestly because a manhole cover opens and two Tibetans show up out of the manhole because if you remember another one of Adam's beliefs is that these Tibetans are watching us through tunnels. So Yut sees them in the middle of the road, he goes to swerve and unfortunately he crashes his car. So he crashes and he's like the car's flipped upside down. And now just at this time that them are walking down the road that Newt is driving on and they see the car flip over and they're like, oh my God, let's go help him. So they go to help him, they pull him out and they decide to take him to Jasmine Cottage because it's close by, Anathema is there, she might be able to help. So they take him towards there. But Anathema, she's already sat at her table with all the first aid items laying out. Listen, she's read the book. She knows this is part of the plan. She knows he's coming. So next, Newt wakes up in a bed in Jasmine Cottage and he's like, what is going on? Anathema says she's never met a witch finder before. She's like, I looked in your wallet, but of course, really, she knew from the book. She says she's an occultist, but really she's a witch and congratulations on finding her, but he's half an hour late. And so obviously he's like, what? is going on? Anyway, she ends up telling him all about the book and like how it's all predicted and everything and that there's only about five or six hours until the end of the world. Next, we go back to the them again. So Adam and his friends and they're talking about all the stuff again that he's been learning in his book from Anathema. And they're basically talking about all the injustices in the world. They're like, how is this fair? How is this fair? Whales are being killed and everything is just really unfair. Like, why are people doing this stuff? We should just start again. And as they're talking about all this, Adam starts getting these weird thoughts. So he's the antichrist. Like he's gonna have these thoughts because he's supposed to bring about the end of the world. So his brain starts telling him, you can do something Adam. Like you can change this. You can start the world over if you want to. And just as he's thinking these things, these storm clouds start coming in. Things are getting a little bit weird. Adam says to his friends, you know, we can just roll everything up and start it again. Like we should just do that. We should roll it all up and we should just start from scratch. But when he says it, it doesn't sound like his own voice. It sounds like someone else. Adam says like they can have one continent each it'll be great everything will be perfect and that older people are just messing everything up and his friends like they're kids so they're like what about our mom and dads like we don't want to lose our mom and dads and Adam's like I can get you new ones don't even worry about it he also tells them he's got some friends coming who are going to help them out and the friends he's referring to are our four horsemen of the apocalypse death famine war and pollution now meanwhile in the world Adam's having these thoughts the world is starting to come to an end and it's starting to go crazy so the weather is going mad, there's wind everywhere, storms everywhere, trees are starting to grow up in like residential areas and like malls and everything, like trees and wildlife is starting to grow up as if the world's being like redone. And from the depths of the sea, a kraken comes up and swallows a whole group of people who are poaching for whales. Now back in Jasmine Cottage with Newt and Anathema and the cottage windows shattered pieces and we find Newt and Anathema hiding under a table. They're talking to each other and he he basically says like there's so much stuff I've never done in my life like I can't believe it. They're chatting and Newt's crushing pretty hard on Anathema. One thing leads to another and they end up kissing. Now Shadwell, the president of the Witchfinders Association, he's worried about Newt. He's like I sent him off into Tadfield and the world's starting to go crazy. Like I'm worried about him. I should go as well. We then have Aziraphale who's in his bookshop and he creates like 
a ring on the ground so that he can talk to heaven. So he sets up like candles, incense, and creates this like a blue circle that allows him to talk to heaven. And he ends up talking to the Metatron, this character here, who is basically the voice of God, but it's like a separate character to actual God. So it, yeah, it's a bit confusing, but anyway, he's a voice of God. And he says to the Metatron, like, I think we can stop Armageddon. Like if we go and find this boy, we can stop things. And the Metatron is like, we don't want to stop it. It's like, that's not part of the plan. The plan is that we're going to win. Now Aziraphale is frustrated. He doesn't want to return to heaven. He doesn't want the world to end, of course, like we've spoken about. So he calls Crowley for advice. Now Crowley can't talk to him. Crowley's like, I'm not alone. Can't talk right now. And as Aziraphale hangs up the phone, he hears, away with ye, ye spawn of hell. <laughs> but who is it? What? We will pick that up in part three of Good Omens. Oh yeah, baby. Oh, it's getting so, so good. I can't wait for part three of the finale when we are gonna be breaking down like actual Armageddon, what happens, and then the end of this book. Let me know in the comments what you're thinking so far. And yeah, I guess I will see you guys in part three. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.